Well, good morning, church family. Come on, stand to your feet. Welcome everyone worshiping with us today online. Come on, let's get into the presence of God. Here we go. Let's sing this out. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory. Come on, can we put our hands together this morning? When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain moon. As I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Come on, let's sing this. Here we go. So when I find I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, come on, can we lift up a shout today? Woo! And if you for me, who can be against me? Woo! For Jesus, there's nothing impossible. stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before. Come on, sing it out. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. 
Jesus, we fix our eyes on you this morning. The one who truly matters.
We make room for you in our lives, in our families, in our homes, in our jobs. There's room for you. Come and move, Jesus. Spirit, come. Move. Do what you need to do. Let your love break through our hearts are open to you come on this is easy part we make room just sing we make room for you we make room for you yes we do god we make room for you come and take your place come and make 2022, we declare it, God. Breakthrough, yeah, 
Jesus. Let your kingdom come in. Come on, make it your prayer. Oh, we make room for you. We make room for you. Yes, we do. We make room for you. Come and take your place. Just put your hands on your heart and make it your prayer. We make room. We make room for you. We make room for you. God, we make room for you. Come and take your place. Come and make your Take your place, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. No longer I who live, but Christ in me. For I've been born again. My heart is free. The hope of heaven. 
forget the moment I heard you call my name Out of the grip of darkness Into the light of grace Just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life <laughs> And where there was dead religion Now there is living to the Lord. Amen. Amen. 2022 will be a year that we worship like we've never before. Come on, somebody. Yeah. The Lord, as I was praying this morning, the Lord told me that as we're here today, that he really wanted to set this in your heart this morning, that some of us in the last 18 months, the last two years, we, we've gone to a place of desperation. But God wants us to move our mind in 2022 to a place of expectation. That we expect the good things of God. That we expect the covering and protection of our God. That we don't just ask for it, that we expect it. Because praise God, we're still here. Praise God, the King of Kings is still on the throne. Praise God, we still get to worship in this morning. Amen. Come on, just lift your hands to him this morning. Come on. Father, right now, Lord, we just thank you. Father, we, we set in place that you 
are the most important thing in our lives this morning. As we worship you, Lord, we say thank you for your goodness. Lord, we say thank you for your protection. Lord, we say thank you for your covering and your favor and your blessing over our families, over our jobs, over our lives. Father, that your kingdom would come to Lubbock, Texas and Church on the Rock in 2022 like never before. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Woo! Amen and amen. Well, it takes a day like today to find out who the faithful people are, amen? Come on, somebody. Hey, thanks for worshiping us with this morning. I want you to do something for me. I want you to find four or five people, tell them Happy New Year, and then you guys can find a seat. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is everybody doing good? I, uh, I agree with Pastor Heath. You guys are impressive. I, uh, we were talking last night. I got up this morning, and it, it's, it's, it's cold, right? And the roads are slick. And there's a pretty decent crowd in here for that, and I'm, I'm impressed with you guys. I, uh, how many of you guys were excited to see the snow, though, yesterday? Anybody else besides me? I was way excited. I felt like we were actually, uh, we had like a delayed Christmas with my side of the family. And so we were having that yesterday. So it actually felt like, like, like a white Christmas almost, even though it was like a week delayed for us. But um, it was pretty cool. I felt like the whole, the whole spirit in the room just like began to rise as we looked out the window and snow began to fall. So I, uh, man, I'm grateful for that. I hope, you know, I was thinking this morning, it's been, uh, it's really been almost two weeks. Well, Many of you guys were here for the candlelight service, but if you weren't here for that, it's been two weeks since we've seen you guys. So I hope you had a great Christmas, a great New Year's. Um, I'm excited about 2022. It's gonna be a good year, amen? It really is. Uh, I'm, I appreciate our worship team and just the opportunity to worship him as we kick off the year. And I wanna just encourage, Pastor, he said it when he got up, he said, man, we're gonna worship like never before this year, but I encourage you to do that on, on, on your own. Let's make this year a time where we just worship the Lord with all of our heart and everything in us. Um, man, it's been a, 2021 was great. We're excited about this year. I wanna encourage you, we, um, we had so many good things happen. You guys were so faithful, so generous. Um, you, we could go through, you kind of saw the recap video as we ended the year last year. We could go through so many things that, that God did this church. But I just wanna encourage you as we start off 2022, let's start it off with a heart of generosity. Let's be faithful with our giving today. Um, you guys can, can give electronically. You can give with our giving kiosk out in the foyer. You can drop your gifts in the boxes um, as you go out the door there. But I encourage you to start off the year just as faithful as you ended 2021. And let's, let's start with the generous heart today. We, uh, we've got a deeper service coming up this Wednesday night. And I, you know, we, I, we just talked about worship, but I wanna encourage you guys to come to our first deeper of 2022. It's gonna be a powerful time, seven o'clock right here within this room. Um, if you've never been to a deeper, come for the first time. It's simply a time of worship and prayer and it's a powerful way to start off the week and start off the month and start off the year within this case. So if you have been before, you know about them and come join us for it. Today we are honored because Pastor Heath, um, our lead pastor, your lead pastor, is going to be here to kick off this year and bring us a great word, and I'm super excited to hear it. I'm so appreciative of him and his leadership. Would you guys give him a huge hand as he comes up to bring us a word today? Thank you, Pastor Jansen. Well, good morning. Man, I am, I am super excited to be here. I'm super excited to dive into the word this morning. Uh, before I do that, I want to give you guys a little update, though. Um, just because you're probably gonna find out and I want you to hear it from us. Uh, last night at about nine o'clock, we got a call from Pastor Linda uh, who was having uh, some chest pains 
and took her to the emergency room. And uh, man, God was with us the entire time. Um, she did have a mild heart attack last night. Uh, the doctors were able to get her in, and in 20 minutes, they had put uh, two stents in her heart. Um, and so she, I just want you guys to know that God is a good God. Man, we are so thankful this morning. She, I text her this morning, and she's like, I feel so much better. And I just declare that she's going to be better than ever. Yeah. <laughs> and that God protected her. And so I would just appreciate it if you guys would pray for, for her this week. She's gonna be in the hospital for another day or two and then she'll get to come home. Uh, but man, we are giving God praise this morning for his goodness. Uh, like I said, it was, it was just amazing how things worked out and, and I just thank God for that this morning. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, we are starting a new series this morning called Pillars. Does everybody know what a pillar is? If you're gonna build a house, don't build it on a house without a foundation, right? Don't build it on a house without pillars. The pillars are what hold the things up. And we really felt like as we started 2022, we wanted to shift the page. We wanted to turn the page. It feels like, honestly, for the last 18 months, two years, that as a church, we have had to be so uh, reactive to things. You guys know what I'm saying? Does it feel like that in your life? Like every week, there's something to react to. There's something to answer. There's something happened in our world. Are we gonna go help these people? Are we gonna go help those people? And it's like, man, we, 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 we get all over the place and we get so scattered. And the Bible says that where there is no vision, where there are no pe pillars, that the people perish. And so we wanted to, to start a sermon series this year on the things that Church on the Rock has been built on. For 36 years, this church has been a church that makes an impact in Lubbock and all across our world, and it does it because of certain pillars that our founding pastor, Pastor Jackie, has put into place. Now, here's the thing. These things that we're talking about over the next few weeks, they should also be applied to your life as a believer, not just to the house of God, that these are these are things in my life that don't move. These are things in my life that cause me to be who I am. And so we're going to be talking about a few of those. In fact, next week, we're going to be talking about the pillar of prayer. Uh, and we're excited because on January 9th, January 10th, we're going to start our 21 days of prayer and fasting. How many of you have done our 21 days of prayer and fasting before? Where we take the first 21 days part of the season and, and fast something. We fast social media, we fast food. Uh, not fast food, but we fast <laughs> food, okay? But we take something away from our flesh so that we can focus on God, so that we can hear God. That's gonna start next week as we start talk about the pillar of prayer. Many of you don't know this, but for years, in fact, when I first started coming to the church, uh, Pastor Jackie we, we prayed every morning from six to seven, five days a week, for I can't even remember how many years it was. This, this house was built on the pillar of prayer, amen? But today, I wanna start with the pillar of grace. Everybody say grace. Now, let me preface this, because a lot of people uh, like to divide grace and truth. They like, to, they like to say, well, I'm a truth person, I'm not a grace person, or I'm a grace person, I'm not a truth person. Can I tell you, the, the main pillar of Church on the Rock is the truth, it's the Word of God. And no matter how many people disagree with it, it will always be the pillar of Church on the Rock, that we listen to the Word of God, we read the Word of God, we listen to His truth. And for so many of us, we get that part, but for a lot of us, we fall short in the grace area, all right? Megan Trainer said this. She said, I'm all about that grace, all about that grace, no devil, all right? You guys that are laughing, do y'all know that song? What kind of music are y'all listening to? That's not good. But one of the most one of the most common songs, and we've actually, since I've been writing this sermon, every day I've been getting up in my quiet time, and this sounds crazy, uh, but I've been listening to Alan Jackson's Amazing Grace. And 
can I just tell you that in the last month that I've written this and I've been listening to this song, it has wrecked me. Like, it has wrecked me that grace is available to me. That, that it says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That saved a despicable person like me. That saved a miserable person like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind because I'm seen. I once was lost, but now I'm found is talking about grace. When Jesus sent his son to die on the cross, the gift of grace became available to us. But I find as a church, as Christians, that one of the things we struggle with the most is to walk in the gift of grace. That we fill ourselves with shame and guilt and I should have done better and I should have done this. And, and, and God says, no, I've given you my grace. And so if you're taking notes today, I want you to write this first thing down. The first thing is this, is that grace is a gift. Grace is a gift. Robert Morris defines grace as this. Grace is the unmerited, undeserving, unearned kindness and favor of God. Grace is is a gift. Ephesians 2 says this, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. John 1 says that with Moses came the law, but with Jesus came truth and grace. Grace is a gift. Grace is something, how many of you got a gift for Christmas this year? A lot? You got a lot of gifts? How many of you got a lot of gifts? How many of you have noticed that since you become parents, the amount of gifts goes down, right? Like, it, it just does. It goes down. I, I, uh, I uh, <laughs> you know, if I get one more uh, uh, rock that says, Dad, you rock on it, <laughs> Merry Christmas, like, like, I love it, but I'm like, but Daddy wants a gift card, all right? Daddy, <laughs> Daddy ain't looking for no rock, all right? But this year, we had our family Christmas, and I was watching. My, my son, Will, he's six years old. And you should see him open a gift. How many of you have kids? How, how many of you, it is the most enjoyable thing to see your kid open their gift? Will, boy, I mean, he goes at it. He tears it open. He excuse me, it could be a water bottle. And for three hours, he'd play with it. He played with the box like for an entire day. But he opens it up and he's like, wow. And then he goes, what is it? <laughs> and we have to go, I don't know what it is. We have to tell him what it is. But then I was watching because the adults, myself, my brother-in-laws, our, our in-laws, they got us gifts and you know how we open gifts as an adult? We, 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 oh, I, I found myself opening it, or somebody else would open it, and they'd be like, oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, uh, that's way too much. That, that's just, that's way too much. And I wonder if, I wonder if our pride gets in the way of us receiving gifts sometimes, of us receiving the grace of God sometimes. The gift that was given really has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the person that gave the gift. That person, God, Jesus Christ, says you're worth the gift of grace that I gave you. You're worth the truth. You're worth the good things that I give to you. And yet so many times we're like, well, I messed up again, God. God, I, man, this parenting thing, man, I just keep, I keep dropping the ball. I did it again, God. I sinned again, and I sinned again, and God goes, no. I didn't give you the gift of grace so you could harp on all the mistakes that you made. I gave you the gift of grace so you could live a life of freedom. And as those things come, somebody say, praise God, that we get the opportunity to say, you know what, I did mess up again, but the grace of God covers me. Now then, here's what grace is not. Grace is not your get out of jail free card. Because I talk to a lot of people 
that are dealing with sins and they're dealing with things in their life that God's plan for your life was for you not to be held hostage to that, but you continue to do it because I got God's grace. Well, I'll just, I'll just keep drinking because of God. God's grace covers me. God's grace covers me. And, 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 and you're right, but can I tell you that God wants you to live a life free of those things. God wants you to live a life without those things in your life that we would get to a point where we say, man, I, the best version of me as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a man is one free of sin and free of bondage. And how do I get that? I walk in the grace that God gave me. I walk in the grace that God gave me. You see, grace is a gift. Philip Yancey says this, grace is a gift that costs everything for the giver and nothing for the recipient. Whoo! Boy, aren't you glad that God gave us his grace? Grace is a gift. The second thing is this, is grace is for them. Everybody say them. Them. Say it again. Say them. Grace is for them. Paul told Titus this, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation for just the people that go to church. Oh, wait, hold on. That's the that's Heath Watts version there. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation for the people that worship during worship. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation for white people or black people. No, it says, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation for all people. Grace is for everyone. Can I tell you that if we want to reach more people as a church, yes, we need to tell the truth. Yes, we need to share God's truth. But we need to do it with an approach of grace. And I feel like where we've made a mistake, church, listen to me, because I'm gonna talk to this about a second. And, and this is not for y'all. This is for the people who didn't show up because it was too cold, okay? Because I know you guys would never do this. But have you ever found yourself playing the game of levels? Play, playing the game of, well, they're bad, but I'm just kind of good bad. Some of you are laughing. Like, can I tell you, growing up as a kid and even in college, I was like a, a, a good, bad person. I drank a little, kissed a little, like, like I told a lie every now and then. But can I tell you that I knew some really bad people? Gilbert, you met some bad people in your life, haven't you? Some, some bad people. And, and in some weird way, if we're not careful, we can come to a place where we think we're better than other people. We, we, we can come to a place where we think, in fact, all of you probably showed up this morning being freezing cold because you're like, well, I'm just kind of better than that person that didn't come to church this morning, right? But we can find ourselves in a place I can find myself in a place where I almost feel like I'm better than somebody. And you say, yeah, Pastor Heath, I know that, I know that, that, I know that I've stirred the pot a little bit with my family. I know I've done some things, but that person, they're living in a homosexual relationship. Oh, oh, oh. And, and, and we become the standard for God's goodness. Are you hearing me? We become the standard for what's good and what's not good. Read the, read the Bible about the things that the Lord detests and the Lord hates. You know what one of them is? A person that causes division. A person that causes division on Facebook. Come on, somebody. A person that causes division politically, a person that causes, and, and we think that's just a little thing and there's all these big things. But the Bible says the Lord detests that little sin that you think is little. 
The Lord detests somebody who lies. And, and, and we have just wrapped this whole thing around that we deserve the grace because we just tell little white lies. Oh, I love Jesus, but I just cuss a little. Huh? And in our mind, it's okay because we're not as bad as them. Romans says this. Sorry, my kids had my iPad this weekend, and apparently they turned my timers on. It keeps shutting down. Romans 3 says this. For all, everybody turn to your neighbor and say, you're all, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through his redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Yes, I want to tell the truth. Yes, I want to tell somebody if there's sin in their life. Yes, I want to tell somebody if they need to make something right in their life. But I want to do it with the spirit of grace and not a spirit of condemnation and shame. We, we, we saw this last year talking about graces for them. We, we had a whole lot of people, and praise God that Lubbock is now a sanctuary city. I think that's the most amazing thing for our city. I think it's amazing, but can I tell you? Because we had a lot of people said, you need, to, you need to talk about how it's so bad and it's so bad. And we have people in this room that have had abortions. Like, do you, do you? Because, oh, that's a big thing. And so us little sinners need to condemn them and need to shame them. No, we need to be a place to minister to them and for them to find grace and for them to find the healing that they need in their life. You say, are you telling me that big sinners are welcome here? Every single one of them. In fact, if this thing gets so full of big sinners, I'll ask you to move over and give them your seat. Because it's the grace of God that set you free and it's the grace of God that set them free. It's not perfection, it's not performance, it's not you go do something better, you did this better than them. No, grace is available to them. And grace is available to you. The, did you know that? Did, did you know? I, I, found, I found this out that when it comes to people, we fall in one of two categories. We're either really good at giving grace to everyone else and not giving grace to ourselves, or we're really good at giving grace to ourselves and not giving grace to anyone else. Can I, can I tell you that God has wrecked me in this area? I, I know, I know in my heart that God's grace has set me free. But can I tell you as your pastor, I still mess up. I still drop the ball. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on the stage ready to preach and felt so unworthy to come up here and share the word of God because of what had gone on the week before about the, the parenting decisions that I had made, about the, the quick, I had gotten quick to anger, about the things that I had thought and the stuff that was in my head. And God wants you to know today that his grace is sufficient for all those things. I, I don't get up here and do this because I've got everything together. We don't get up and go to work because we've got everything together. We don't get up and, and do what we do because we make all the right decisions and we're perfect. No, we get up and do what we do because God's grace empowers us to keep moving forward. And some of us this year, what God wants you to hear is you need to let the shame go. You need to let the guilt go. You need to let the hurt go. Because here's the deal, man, I, I can't, I can't, there's no theological wise way for you to accept grace as a gift. You just accept it. You just accept it like that six-year-old boy that's opening a present and you say, man, praise God. You say, man, I, I just, I come to church and I just, I don't know, 
sometimes I just don't have anything to worship about. Can I tell you, you can always worship about the grace of God. You can always give God thanks for his grace. You can always give God thanks for a redo and a retry. But the truth is, is this, is some of us, we're our own worst critic. We're never good enough. We're never strong enough. We don't know what we're doing. And God wants to set you free from that. Can I tell you, as for Church on the Rock, we will always err on the side of grace. It, it, it's not popular. I can tell you right now, it's not popular. It's not, it's not popular with our world, but we will always err on the side of grace. We, we will always say, you know what? <laughs> we gotta fix this. We gotta make this right. But we're gonna keep moving forward. And you're gonna go out there this week and you're gonna sin. I'm gonna tell you, there's gonna be a seat for you here next Sunday. There's gonna be a place for you here next Sunday. Romans 8 says this. It says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus. Right now, I'm just gonna stop right there and tell you that the voice of condemnation has no place in your mind in 2022. Can I tell you, God's voice may bring conviction, but it never brings condemnation. If, you're, if, you're, if you feel like you're being condemned and shamed and guilted, can I tell you, that is not the voice of your Lord. That is the voice of the enemy. That is not the voice of your Father. And we get so scared sometimes that we're gonna mess it up that that heavenly Father that adopted us and chose us that we're gonna mess this thing up and he's gonna have nothing to do with us. And God says, no, you're, you're welcome back as many times as you want. <laughs> There's always, there, we can talk about the prodigal son coming back. Messed everything up. And if it was our earthly father, most of us would be going, oh man, he's gonna tell me all the things I did wrong, he's gonna shame me, he's gonna make me feel bad. And it said his father said, hey, Let's throw a party because my son is back. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation to those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law and from the sin of death. And so my question to you today is this, is as we begin 2022, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you today about grace? What, what is, he, is he speaking to you? Maybe, can I, can I tell you what he, what he spoke to me? Is too many times I have a spirit of judgment and not a spirit of grace. That I don't understand that grace sometimes could be for them the big sinners, the, 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 the major ones. Maybe God's here today and he's saying, you know what, some of you need to quit being so hard on yourself. You're your own worst critic and it is literally, your, your criticism has crippled you and you can't move forward and you can't accept the things of God and you can't rejoice in the goodness of God because you're so busy evaluating all your mistakes. You're, you're, you're perfection driven all the time. Where does God wanna heal you today? I want everybody to stand up with me as I close this morning. I wanna declare this over us. Can I tell you, grace, whether it's for yourself or for them, needs to become a pillar in your life this morning. It needs to become a staple of who you are, the goodness, grace of God. Jeremiah 31 says this, and I want to declare this over you as we move into 2022, that this is the brand new covenant that I will make with Israel when the time comes 
I will put my law within them, write it on their hearts, and be their God, and they will be my people. They will no longer go around setting up schools to teach each other about God. They'll know me firsthand, the dull and the bright, the smart and the slow. Slow. I'll wipe the slate clean for each of them. I will forget they ever sinned. Can I tell you the things that's causing shame and condemnation in your life? Can I tell you, whether you know this or not, God's already forgotten those things. God's already, the Bible says that when we repent, which basically means that when we change directions and say, I'm not doing that anymore, that God forgets it as far as the east is from the west. But can we forget it this morning? Can we forget that thing that happened 20 years ago? That every time we get around family or every time we get around friends just comes back to the service. Can we forget it? And can we walk in grace? Can we forget the hurt in our life that that person caused? And years later, you can't even be around them because everything comes back. And God says, no, can you give them grace this morning? Can you give grace to that coworker you're going to see this week that drives you crazy? Can you give grace to your kids because they don't know what they're doing? <laughs> and they give you grace all the time because you don't always know what you're doing. Can you give grace this morning and can you receive grace? this morning Father right now every head bowed every eye closed I just want to ask this question if you're here today and you say man Pastor Heath I have a hard time receiving grace forgiving myself letting the condemnation and the shame take over I just want you to raise your hand right now hands going up all over the room Father right now my prayer for them Father, it's the same prayer I've prayed so many times for myself is, Lord, help me understand how much you love me. Help, me. help them understand how much you love them, how much you care for them, how much the things that they're dwelling on, Father, you've forgotten about those things and you're moving forward. Father, give them grace this morning. And now, Father, for anybody in this room that, that may struggle with just a spirit of judgment instead of grace that says, man, I just, I'm constantly, I find myself sometimes constantly picking out the bad in everybody, constantly finding the bad in everybody. Father, help us to be filled with grace this week. Father, help us to assume the best. Help us to give them the benefit of the doubt. Because your grace is not for some, Lord, it's for all. It's for everybody. It's for every person. Now, Father, as we go into 2022, Lord, I declare that there is more in our lives. Father, you're going to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. You guys have been great. Be careful leaving. We'll see you next Sunday.